Hey everybody, what's going on? And we're going to be going over some force versus time graphs today and how to kind of figure out how they relate to momentum and impulse. Uh, first, I want to talk about just graphs. And remember, graphs are really useful to us on the A, really in anything, but on AP Physics 1, uh, they love to have graphs show up and have us figure things out from them. And remember, there's always three things you want to look for when you're given a graph. The first is like, what does the graph just give you, right? And like, if you just read the graph, what does it tell you? And then other things are, you know, what does the area give you? What does the slope give you of that graph? And so there's a couple spots here where I've highlighted. Remember, the area simply multiplies the axes together. So uh, for example, if I'm looking at these, Right. This is a velocity time graph right here. And if I do the area, that's just multiplying velocity times time. OK, now if there's weird shapes, like if you need to find the area of like a triangle or something, then you just do the area of a triangle one half. Those two things multiplied together. Right. But uh, that's more of like the specific case. Um, but simply just seeing that we're multiplying those two things together, that's the area, right? If this is a force versus time graph, this is a little bit more relevant to what we're doing today, but the area would just be force times time, right? For a force distance graph, we just did our unit on energy and work, and then you had force times distance to give us work there, right? On a position time graph, the area would give us position times time. And yeah, it's just as simple as that, right? In relation to that, the slope, rise divided by run, right, will divide these two things. And because it's rise over run, then we're going to do the vertical axis divided by the horizontal axis. So let's go blue. The slope for this would be velocity over time, right? The slope for force time graph would be force over time. Uh, for a force distance graph, we'd have force over distance, right? And then same thing for position in time graph, we would have position over time. Now, why do we care is because maybe you have an equation that gives us something like this. Like, for example, we know that the equation for work is FD. And then sometimes if there's an angle, FD cosine theta, right? So if you have a graph... I know, oh, FD, that's my equation for work. So I can get the work by finding the area of a force distance graph, okay? So that's just kind of how we uh, go about doing things. Now today, we're going to be looking mainly at this, this force versus time graph. Uh, let me scroll over here, zoom in a little bit, make it easier on y'all to see. And here we go, okay? Uh, a soccer player kicks a soccer ball that is initially at rest. So that's probably important. Okay. The net force on the ball over time is given in this graph. And we want to know how does the soccer ball's momentum change from 0 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds. So right there, those the that unit, I know I was throwing people for a loop a little bit yesterday. That's milliseconds. Right, uh, that would be one times ten to the negative third seconds. So there's a thousand milliseconds for every one second. Okay. Um. So we want to know total momentum change, and we have force and time graph. So right away, I'm thinking uh, there's a momentum impulse type of relationship. So we're going to start with the momentum impulse theorem, which tells me the impulse right here, that's what we call impulse, uh, is equal to the change in momentum. Remember, mass times change in velocity, that is what we call the change in momentum. Okay, so it's asking me just solve for this whole piece. So this right here comes from the area of that graph, 
Okay, so between zero and 10 milliseconds, notice this is in milliseconds down there, uh, zero and 10, so I'm gonna go, all right, and then I'm gonna find this area in there. Okay, so that's a base of 10 and a height of 20. So that's a triangle, so one half base times height, all right, that equals one half the base is 10 milliseconds. 10 milliseconds is equal to, I would move the decimal three times to the left if I divide by a thousand. So 0 0.01 seconds. And then the height is 20 newtons. Right? So that would give me one half base times height. That would give me this uh, impulse of point one. Let's see, and it's impulse, so newtons times seconds is equal to the total momentum change. Now remember, newtons times seconds, we can rewrite a little bit, so a newton times a second is the exact same thing. Remember, a newton is a force, so it's a mass times an acceleration. So a mass is a kilogram, an acceleration is a meter per second squared, and then that whole newton term right there is times seconds. And what happens is we end up with one of these things canceling. So you end up with a kilogram times a meter per second squared, which is good because that's our units for momentum. So 0.1 kilogram meters per second squared is equal to that entire change in momentum right there. Okay? Cool. Let's take a look at one more slightly different thing that it's asking us, and I actually meant to change this to 20. All right. In this problem, we got a little bit different situation. A clown slaps a donkey that's just sitting there minding its own business. Uh, it's at rest, okay? I don't know, maybe this particular donkey is into that kind of thing. And that statement is mainly there just to let us know the donkey has a mass of 20 kilograms, okay? We have a net force versus time graph given to us right here. How does the donkey's velocity change from five milliseconds to 15 milliseconds. So for this one specific part on the graph, and I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit, all right? Uh, so it's important for us to know five milliseconds is right there, and you notice from five to 10, there's no force. So there's no change in momentum or velocity or anything right there, because it's zero force, right? So the only thing that's actually going to happen is in that little spot. And we need to find the area of that because, again, this is a force, how forces are relating to momentum or velocity changes. That's to me, tells me I'm gonna have a momentum and impulse type of relationship, which we use the impulse momentum theorem for. Now we're being asked solve for the donkey's change in velocity. So I'm solving for just that piece right there. So I'm gonna rearrange this equation to solve for change in velocity. And there is my impulse on top. And I would divide this mass to the other side. Okay. And so remember this top piece right here, this top piece comes from the area of that graph, of that force time graph. Right? This bottom piece we know from the problem. It's 20 kilograms. So let's find the area of this. This is a base of five and a height right there of 100 newtons. And this is a, remember this is right here, five milliseconds again, okay? So when I find the area of this, one half base times height, right? That's one half. The base is five milliseconds, and if we need to, we could say, okay, five milliseconds, right? 
that's I would take that decimal place and I would move it one, two, three, and now I would have 0 0.005. So my base is 0 0.005 seconds, and the height is 100 newtons. Okay, do a little calculation, and we have, uh, let me just double check, 100 times a half times 0 0.005. So that gives us a total area over here, I'm going to plug it in over here now, of 0 0.25. And remember that is kilograms times meters per second. You can see those units on the previous example we did. Divided by the mass of 20 kilograms, which is, gives us a final massive change in velocity of point zero point zero one two five meters per second right massive velocity change that donkey hardly moved that clown needs to get stronger okay and that's how we use these force first time graphs right now if you want to know the impulse or the change in momentum you just find the area because that relates to force times time. Force times time. Cool? All right. I'll catch you all on the flip side.